Hi everyone, I'm Ravindra, the host and founder of the ASEAN Network, a digital community of thought, business and young leaders. The objective is to connect like-minded individuals who can empower each other to make a positive impact within their communities, but also to inspire and provide knowledge to the younger generation through speaker series and webinar. Topic discussed such as AI, FinTech, cybersecurity, smart cities and digital economy. The format of today's event, Leaders by Head and Heart series, is composed of two questions to Richard. The first one is related to the intellect and his professional background, while the second question is related to his purpose in life. Then to conclude the interviews, I will ask him three keywords of his choice that he may explain to us. But before starting, let me introduce you to Rich Richard. Richard is currently a board member of KPMG Dubai. He is the former chief executive officer of KPMG in India. He has more than 36 years of experience in professional services, he is well admired for his expertise toward corporate governance and enterprise risk management. Richard is also an articulate and eloquent speaker, contributing at several public forums while providing soft leaderships through articles in leading newspapers and magazines. And Richard is also associated with a nonprofit organization focused on education for the unprivileged and senior care. He has been contributing significantly in inspiring and mentoring the youth who need assistance and guidance. So I'm very honored uh, to have reached out today for her second uh, Leaders by Head and Heart series. And I will start with the first question to you, Richard, which is more related to the intellect. What's, what's your vision of the, of the digital economy in ASEAN compared to a India? Perhaps you can uh, briefly mention some opportunities and challenges. Uh, thank you, Ravindran, for having me here. Uh, really appreciate it. And uh, good afternoon, everybody, to all the people who may be listening to this podcast. Uh, I think the very first uh, thing is that uh, COVID has brought out one thing. Um, and even when the COVID was not there, technology was overtaking our lives. Today, we are doing this format is a clear indication of how uh, the digital technology is being used. I think the, the, the challenge between ASEAN and India, before we talk of ASEAN and India, I think it's important to talk of the big tech companies have actually monopolized the entire technology platform. And we, the recent fight between the Australia newspapers and Google is there for everybody to see. And there are many such uh, you know, conflicts between governments, media, and big tech companies that are going on. What I find is that ASEAN as a group has actually adopted technology quite fast because if you see ASEAN's growth actually came out of being part of the global supply chain and you were there selling material and producing manufacturing. However, with the technology boom, with your Go ASEAN, uh, uh, digital ASEAN uh, initiatives and various other initiatives you have done, I think adoption in ASEAN has been very good. Now, when we come down to India, India had a digital India platform, which they started. And some of the great initiatives that we took was that we got every Indian a unique identification number, which is the Aadhaar card. We are the fastest adopters when it comes to UPI in the banking system. So it, it makes it much cheaper, much, much more effective. And many other countries are also adopting it. We went with the Smart City Initiative and we went with the, the GST. The GST in is another IN is another big initiative that the government took on technology. So while India's technology is very much broad-based, I think ASEAN's adoption has been much better than India. If you talk of technology adoption, India has got a lot to learn. Uh, we have got to do a lot of uh, things with relating to extracting value from artificial intelligence, regulation in the digital world, cybersecurity has become a big issue for everybody actually. And uh, India more so because we're getting attacked pretty regularly. And we also need to roll out our digital infrastructure like 5G, et cetera. So in certain areas, I think ASEAN is definitely ahead of India. 
and i think uh, uh, this gives asean a good cutting edge of because in today's world anybody who's got a digital platform would be able to bring productivity bring improvement in how you deliver services and how because all global networks have now been diminished with the uh, digital platform and made everybody equal so i think uh, i think this will also help in managing the supply chain using the digital platform better than what was being done earlier so i think both india asean good position asean ahead of india i would say yes ramendra thanks risha for this very clear and and concise uh, answers about uh, the different uh, indeed uh, 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 um, uh, vision but also uh, uh, right now a uh, uh, digital uh, uh, identity for both uh, asean and and, and india and I, I do agree with uh, with uh, with this uh, uh, thought uh, risha so my second question is 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 now um, uh, uh, the, the 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 good part because uh, now we are already coming on the on the very uh, uh, deep question which is related to your purpose in life uh, uh, and that's why i think you are the perfect uh, ambassador for for also leaders by head and heart series i think i've been also inspired uh, with your tedx talk that you have been uh, given on the february 2016 I, 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 I've seen that on, on, on YouTube uh, speaking about uh, life, higher purpose, and especially for the four Ps uh, uh, in one's life. So I will be really uh, happy to hear uh, from you uh, the, 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 the key ideas from perhaps this vision and also for the, the message for the young generations that I think have been really uh, waiting to hear from, from, from you. So uh, thank you, Ravindran. Uh, this is very, very close to my heart. Higher purpose has been very, very close to my heart because um, I believe that uh, uh, there are two ways a person can run a business. One is with a head, like you said, intellect, which is very important, which is needed. But if you don't have a heart, then you have a huge challenge in today's time. Because uh, if you look at all the great leaders in the world, and I'm giving one example where I call him a universal leader, Nelson Mandela, he was a person who led by the head and the heart. And he said one statement, which I cannot forget, that if, uh, if you lead by the head and the heart, it's a formidable combination and you become a very powerful leader. And uh, because you're able to relate to people, you're able to connect with them. For any organization, when we talk of brand, it is people. It is people who work, they are the brand differentiators because whatever the brand may be, it's people who live and walk that brand day in and day out. So the most successful brands are built around something much more than just profit. We all relate success to money. We relate success to profits. In my view, that's not the way to relate success. Relate success to happiness. Relate success to satisfaction. And I think those are important things that need to be done. So all of these great companies which we have seen, and uh, they are built around ideals, they're built around a purpose. And when you have a common purpose, you bind the people to an organization to come together and work there. So it is the glue that binds people. It's the glue that binds your suppliers. It's your glue that binds your customers. And it's the glue that binds the ecosystem to you. And that whole ecosystem then says whether you're a great organization. So it is no more about profit, uh, creating value for its own sake. It is for how do we create value for the customer? How do we create, how are we positively impacting the society? How we are generating financial returns for the shareholders is last in the order. If we take it in that order, what you get at the end of it is greater employee satisfaction, better customer advocacy, and higher quality of product and services. Because you've got a very motivated staff which is working there, and you've got customers who actually believe in your purpose. So I think it is very, very important that as we go through life, and as we look at certain things, we need to understand, we need as individuals, and now these are for people who are listening it, are we ready to do the hard right thing and not the easy wrong thing? Are we ready to do the hard right thing and not the easy wrong thing? Do we lead by example? We keep looking for examples, but are we the example? Can we become that example? We need to show care. We need to be humble and help people achieve their goals. That's very, very important as we go on. We need to be passionate about what we do. 
and we need to inspire and influence people as we go along. As leaders, that is our job is to inspire and influence people through our own actions and people will come. You know, great managers do great tasks, leaders inspire. And I think that is very important. So we need to graduate from manager to leader. People do what they see. If they see leaders behaving in a particular way, that's exactly that we will work. And it's important for the leaders to operate like a, like he would operate a concert. So how does he get everybody to perform together in collaboration, singing one tune so that the tune is not, imagine listening to different players on different instruments, singing different tunes, it'll be useless. And we need to be the catalyst of the change. Don't look for the change, you be the change. So each of us need to look and say, how do we become the change? One of the very important things in my life, which I've said is, it's not about all the money you make or whatever, how many lives have you touched? And that is very important. How do we touch lives? And how do we connect with people, giving them a better life? And, and that's the only way, because for me, fame and fortune fades with time. But if you're in the service of others, you will be long remembered after you're gone. You'll be remembered for a very long time. People will not forget you for your... So a few takeaways for the youngsters who may be listening in, in here. Do not sell what you will not buy. Do not sell what you will not buy. Become the best version of yourself. Have a moral com compass. Compass shows the direction. Moral compass shows the right direction. Always do the right thing even when nobody is looking. Road to success is narrow and uphill and is achieved through high level of commitment, discipline, very important. We need to be disciplined and committed in what we are doing. Always give that 10% extra. If you worked in a particular time, you put 10% more. Next time, 10% more. And that's what differentiates winners from losers. Remember, direction is more important than speed. So we need to have a direction of where we are going. We need to have a purpose. We need and a higher purpose for me is the capital account while your salary is your current account. So we need, and anybody who's an investing will know what capital account. We need to leave the world a better place than we found it, the spirit of stewardship. And I would always say, be a good ancestor, plant trees you'll never see. Plant trees that you'll never see. And I would just like to end this by saying, live life in such a way that when tomorrow comes and you're not here, how would you like to be remembered? Yes, Ravindra, thank you. Thanks, Vishal. It's very inspiring uh, and, uh, and, uh, and significant uh, uh, answer that you have just uh, shared with us. I think I will add also, you, you, you provide the, the, an example of leadership with Nelson Mandela, but I, I'm sure also that Mahatma Gandhi was also one, one of them. And I do agree that uh, 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 love, generosity, kindness should prevail. And, and you know, just recently I have read an article that more than uh, 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 emotional quotient, intellect, intellectual quotient, now we have the love quotient. So that is something exactly in line with uh, what you have shared. And, and thanks again, because I think it was really inspiring and, 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 and clear, concise with, uh, with a lot of uh, uh, um, uh, uh, nice message for the young generation. Okay. So we will uh, uh, finish soon the, our interviews because the format again is very clear, concise. Uh, people then can have a look uh, uh, whenever they have, if they don't have time, it's only take a brief time of their uh, busy schedule. But before we end our uh, uh, conversation, uh, uh, the format also is to ask to my guest speakers uh, to end and to conclude with three keywords of its choice, and he may also explain it. So I'm happy to hear what are the your three keywords for today, Richard? Yeah, my, in, <clears throat> my three key words in the post-COVID era, uh, very, very clearly linked to where we are going, is going to be agility is my first word, passion is my second word, and resilience is my third word. Agility, why do I talk of agility? And I will talk agility along with mobility. So when we talk of agility, in today's time, we've got to be agile. World is changing. Everything is changing so fast. So are we agile enough to actually fit into the new norm, into the new normal, what we are talking about, which is coming there? Are we ready to forget what we learned? Are we forgetting to unlearn and become new people and become better professionals? So I think agility is going to be the key word for success in today's world. My view, this is my view. 
The second one is passion. When you have passion, nothing is impossible. So if you love something you're doing, it's no more a job. It is beyond a job. It actually then takes over your purpose. It takes over where you want to go. So if somebody is passionate about something, they will give 110% of their effort into that. And that will create great work, great organizations, great individuals, and great professionals, and great human beings. I think, I think the very, very important uh, uh, word at, while I'm talking of passion, I think I would also like to add the word humility. I mean, we need to be humble in today's world. We are what we are and we need to accept it. The next word is resilience. In today's time, we know that if we have to bounce back, we need to what be resilient. We need to have business continuity in our, in our bloods and we need to be able to deal with situations which are very difficult and challenging, but there's a light at the end of the tunnel and we need to be resilient to be able to reach that light. And only the ones who have resilience will be able to go there. And that's my three words. In fact, Thanks, I, I think that, uh, yeah, I think that we, we could say APR, so agility, uh, patience, yes. and resilience. I think that's a beautiful yeah. uh, uh, note to end uh, uh, this conversation. And I do agree again that uh, resilience, uh, and also I will add a resilient leadership it's also something yes. very, very right. important and, and more than resilience. I will also mention inner resilience. Uh, I think this is something uh, for the next uh, couple of months, uh, especially during time of crisis, that every leader's uh, need has the as qualities and obviously also to inspire uh, uh, others. So um, thanks again. I think our next guest speaker will be Mrs. Cherry Atilano. It's a, she's a UN a prize woman uh, and the Philippine ambassadress for food security. And we have also uh, her first, first uh, webinar series, Tech for Good, with three distinguished speakers from blockchain and fintech expertise on next Thursdays. Thanks, Richard, again for your time. And I'm sure your exemplary leadership and testimony will inspire youth in ASEAN. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Ravindran. Thank you for having me. All the best.